it. Um, so this is kind of the, the big thing that I'm going to do. I was going to say, you may never get to... Uh... <laughs> I know. I think it's because people are... Um, it's 12.30 classes right yeah. now. So we caught it at a bad time. I think part of the reason that sororities, perhaps in particular, don't have a stronger tradition at Stanford is during the... It goes back to the Second World War, and all of the men were in the military. And so Stanford had a whole lot more women um, than it ever had before. And yeah, I that's we, true. We're, they were li literally committing suicide and whatever if they couldn't get into uh, sororities. Yeah. So, yeah, they actually banned sororities for after that happened, they banned sororities on campus. Uh, and it was finally in the 90s that they were brought back. Um, but like the sorority houses, like when we drove past the row, there used to be uh, Theta and Pi Phi and Trito. Which is the way that it is at, at most universities. They have the sororities and fraternities separated. Um, except Berkeley, it's done that way. But Berkeley's kind of, you know, off doing their own thing. There's one or two fraternities that habitually manage to get themselves kicked off campus. <laughs> Back At least when, not when you're working. There's, there's nope. not where like anything you want to do this. Um, and the professors like don't really I mean they might care, but like you're allowed to do anything you want. Here's the that outer quad. So this is still part of the new quad building. Um, and then last row is this library right here, which is the new 24 hour library. This works for this one. Stanford loves these roundabouts. They've added like a million like driving roundabouts. I don't know why they put a biking roundabout. Yeah, that's getting right silly, there. isn't it? It's really silly. It doesn't really help. It's because that, that's like a really congested area, but it, it still doesn't do much. Um, so right now we're driving past Newman um, Tower and Memorial Auditorium. Um, so Ho Herbert Hoover was actually in the first um, first freshman class at Stanford, and he wanted to be the first student to move in. So he camped outside of his freshman dorm um, before the night before the event, so he could say he was first to move in. Um, and so he, um, on Stanford's 50th anniversary, dedicated this um, kind of institute and archives to Stanford. Um, so it's the Hoover, Herbert Hoover Institute on um, War, Peace, and Revolution. So his hope was that if he was able to collect an archive of works, um, artifacts and the likes on war, peace, and revolution, it would deter people from taking part in war and promote peace. And now um, the Hoover Institute has expanded and it's basically a big government think tank um, for like economic, foreign um, policy, domestic policy, things like that. Um, so kind of the top leaders in the world will go there. Um, it's Stanford's lone bastion of conservatism. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> And then Memorial Auditorium um, is the largest auditorium on campus. It holds 1,700 students, which is about the size of an incoming freshman class. Um, and that was dedicated um, for all of the years ago, um, President Obama actually gave his um, cyber security summit, was there at, last year, was there at Memorial Auditorium. Um, Martin Luther King Jr. spoke there in the 60s, um, and Don Obama has spoken there several times, um, it's kind of a hot spot for that. I think Gorbachev has spoken there. I, that does, that does ring a bell, I believe so. Um, I, was, I was here in, you know, 
on campus, but I couldn't get anywhere near where it was actually going on. But what a shame. Yeah. Um, so this is um, now the Graduate School of Business. Um, the GSP is right here, so this is the other. So all the graduate schools, business, education, law, and medicine are on campus. So this is the Graduate School of Business. Um, this and Harvard's Business School and Wharton Business School are the top three in the country. Right here with you, um, which is pretty neat. Um, so now we're kind of going, um, we're nearing the end of the tour, but we're going to kind of see some of the athletics part of campus. Um, so that gym right there, that's a student rec center. Um, so any students can go there, use the facilities. There's a uh, fitness center, yoga studio, rock climbing wall, basketball courts. Um, and that's then, named Ar Ariaga too, or is it? It is Ariaga. Yeah. Um, and then these are the sand volleyball courts. Um, Stanford's most recent varsity <laughs> sport that was added was um, sand volleyball. So now they have 37 varsity sports, um, which is pretty much like the most you can have. Um, and then right here, oh, I'm supposed to go that way. Well, I cannot fit through there. Oh, yeah, we have to read really <laughs> <read> them. <laughs> My husband just texted, tell Coach Shaw and Christian McCaffrey I said hello. <laughs> I actually have a class with Christian McCaffrey. I think he's a communications major, so I'll probably end up having more classes with him next year. Um, but yeah, he's he's in, oh. he's in my home class. He's really cute. My, yeah. my husband will think that's pretty cool when I tell yeah. him that our tour guide. So yeah, I actually... Um, I did broadcasting for Stanford football um, for a little bit last year. I did like color commentary, and I do women's basketball is like my thing though. I'm the play-by-play -play -play broadcaster for women's basketball for radio. So, yeah, really so, did you play basketball or did you play that? Yeah, I played. I played in high school. Um, so I've been doing it since my freshman year. My sophomore year, I did um, every single game home and away. I traveled. For um, which was like exhausting and I can't believe that student athletes like do it, but it was such an awesome experience. Um, this, so this is Naples Pavilion right here. So this is where men's and women's basketball and volleyball plays. Um, and regarding Coach Shaw, he was at the men's basketball game on Saturday. I went to it um, and saw him sitting in the stands supporting the men's team. You gotta love that. was putting in their bid to host um, the 2024 Summer Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when San Francisco was putting in their bid for the 2024 Summer Olympics, this is where all of the aquatic events would have been held. Um, Isn't this the Ted Taub I Don't Sexually Harass Women uh, Aquatic Complex? No, this is the Avery Aquatic. Oh, that's right. Well, Taub has um, something here, doesn't he? Toby, Toby Stadium is... Um, is that the tennis? tennis? Ah, tennis, yeah. Hi, guys. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, oh, cool. Yeah, it's really fun watching them. Um, Smell the chlorine stung. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they actually...